This is Gridiron Lights with Brad Beck, only on KTVO. Good evening, everybody. Let's kick things off with two teams that don't like each other. Kirksa was hosting Moberly. Let's start with a new tradition, the players touching a tiger at the end of the tiger walk. First quarter action is Kirksill in black. Blake Riley gets the first down on the play. Check out Nathan Farnsworth. That's a big tied in. Gets the first down on Will Power. Big play. Then it's Riley who makes one cut. Then he turns on the Jets for six points. Tigers after they miss the extra point. Terrible camera work by me on this throw by Moberly's Justin Conaway, but it will be a touchdown. That makes it 7-6. Moberly gets the ball. They almost score on the field goal, but check out Farnsworth with a stop at the goal line to save the touchdown. How about that? But in the end, but in the end, Moberly would win it tonight. The final was 28 to 12. And first game in Iowa with the 1-1 one one Cardinal Comets taking on the undefeated EBF Rockets. Leading our highlights with a great defensive play and a solo sack here from Logan Laughlin. The Comets' first solo of the year. Three sacks total. The boys getting it done on offense as well. Middle of the first and running back Tyler Albert would put the Comets on the board. The first team to score. They went for the two-point conversion but came up a little short. EBF fighting back senior running back Corey Archer with a 25-yard gain for the Rockets, moving his team up the field one play at a time and finishing it right here. Archer fakes right as senior quarterback Dylan Pigsley hands it off. Archer goes wide and scores, tying the game at six. And the Rockets grab that extra point along with a few more points throughout the game. EBF, though, went on to win 51-6. And there's always tremendous excitement surrounding the Bell game between Brookfield and Marceline. The two campuses separated by a mere nine miles. Let's go to Brookfield. Prior to the game, representatives from USA Today presenting the schools with a plaque for best high school rivalry. Brookfield and Marceline received 1,761,259 votes and had shirts made to commemorate the event. Now to the game, Marceline with a special teams block as Blake Belzer blocks the kick recovered by Anthony Steffes and the Tigers are set up. Two plays later, they'll toss it to Dakota Lewis and he'll do the rest as Marceline strikes first. 7 to nothing, and the fans love it. Brookfield, though, would respond with a good running back of their own. It's J.J. Abongo, and he just bounces off the tackle all the way down to the 18-yard line. A few plays later, they call his number again, and he would find the end zone to tie it up at 7. Now, second quarter, following a Marceline punt, Bryson Korf plows ahead for the touchdown, but the Bulldogs miss the extra point, so they lead 13-7. to And right before the half, the Tigers go to the air. Blake Linebaugh hits Trevor Hamilton, who goes in untouched for a 14 to 13 halftime lead. But Brookfield comes back to win the Bell game 16 to 14. And hey, before the game, there was plenty of fun things to do for kids of all ages. All kinds of folks turning out in Brookfield for the game, as they that's what they're playing for the Bell Trophy. And assistant. Athletic Director Mike McBroom tells me they expected about 3,500 fans on hand. And I tell you, if you ever get a chance to see this game, you've got you to take advantage of that. And hey, Centerville coming up off a pretty big loss to Albia last week. Look to redeem themselves at home against Keokuk. The Big Reds really getting after it right from the get-go. Grayson Schmidt makes up a lot of yardage for Centerville. They wouldn't score on this drive, but on the next kickoff, this one going to receiver Colton Gonnerman. He didn't go down without a fight, carrying a few Chiefs on his back for the extra yards. Gonnerman would finish the drive with a beautiful pass from quarterback Michael Starcevich. Gonnerman catches the 30-yard pass over his shoulder and, check that out, runs it in as the Big Reds up six. And finally, still in the first quarter, Game tied seven. This team really likes the passing game, and I can see why this pass right on target for Grayson Schmidt, who takes it all the way in to put Centerville up six, and they'd soon make it seven and finish the first quarter leading 14-7. to seven. That was the score when we left. Let's head to Unionville as upstart Putnam County was hosting Trenton. 
Trenton in white. They ran out of programs. I'm not Creskin, but this is still a great run after the catch by number 12, the Midgets. Tyler Reedger saves a touchdown. The visitor scored on the very next play. 22 drops the ball, but he picks it up and drops six on the Midgets. Jacob Parker of Putnam County rolls out. He will find Cody Quint for the first down as the Midgets were moving the ball. Then Parker calls his own number, 10, but the final numbers were not kind to Putnam County as Trenton would go on to win it 19 to nothing. When we come back, we'll take a look at college football, but first, let's check out the scores. 